As many of you know, um, the dress of the Thai court underwent considerable westernization during the reign of His Majesty King Chulalongkorn, which lasted from 1868 to 1910. Many of it, um, most surviving photographs of the king, show him naturally dressed in full or Persian Wilson attire. Without to answer a simple question, where did he get those clothes? Our presentation this morning will be an overview of our research in progress of this subject. On the left is um, His Majesty King Mongku, the fathers of King Chulalongkorn, and this is the proof of the beginning of the appearance of the European style of Western uniform in Thai court. Several years before, um, this picture was taken around 1865, several years before um, King Mongkut's death on October 1868. Later in the same year, on November 11, the picture on the right is his first coronation of His Majesty King Chulalongkorn. He was only 15 years old. In 1871, several years after his coronation, King Jolongkorn paid his first visit to foreign countries, Singapore and Batavia. To study economic and social affairs, he was now 18 years old. He is the first king of Siam to travel beyond his kingdom's borders. This photograph of the king showing him was taken just before his trip to Singapore. He is wearing his hairstyle in traditional Thai men's style, which is the West might call um, lotus style, which is chafed on the sides and tufted on the top. And this style will change soon due to his trip to Singapore. It was decided that the king and his entourage would wear civil and military uniform during the trip. This, the memoir of the king's half-brother, Prince Damrong, mentions that there were two different styles of the military uniform, full dress and everyday uniform, and a single style of full dress civil uniform. He's go on to say that the jacket was made from navy blue fabric with gold embroidery around the neck and cuffs. Above a shirt, one with a western style neck tie and with a navy blue tie style rapid trousers called Chongraben. The uniform was completed with Western stockings and shoes. In the National Archives, we found a receipt from 1871 documenting the court's order of neckties in white, blue, and black, and European style shirts and trousers in Singapore. But in the receipt um, written in Thai, identifies the name of the shops called John Risley. However, we believe at that might be actually John Little and Company, a Singapore tailor and general store that had opened in 1845. This is a group photograph taken at Singapore Botanic Gardens in 1871 of the king and his entourage. And you look at the photo, um, they all wear half Western, half Thai uniform, um, Western on the top and Thai on the bottom. This hybrid style of the dress, Western on the top, Thai on the bottom, with Western stocking and shoes became the norm at the Thai court for both men and women after the king's return from the trip. Also, please notice the hairstyle if you look at the king on the left. If you compare the slide before, um, you see that it's longer and no longer chafed on the sides. So not only clothing, but hairstyle were part of his effort to modernize. Prince Damrong wrote that soon after His Majesty visits to Singapore and Java, tailors came from abroad to settle the, their store in Bangkok. Later, the same year, in 1871, um, His Majesty King Jolongon went to India. He arrived at Calcutta on 13 January 1872. His Majesty spent 47 days in India. He traveled to many cities including Calcutta, Belarus, Lucknow, Agra, Delhi, and Bombay. Here is Major Edward Sladen. He, a deputy of the British Burma Commission, was appointed to accompany the king during his trip to India. He also wrote a report and his impression about the king of Siam, quote, his manner was frank and considerate at our time. 
and the self-possession of one who had barely attained at the age of 19 years was a remarkably conspicuous as were his gentlemanly bearing and the courtesy of his general demeanor, unquote. This photograph of His Majesty was taken in Calcutta, and how do we know that is um, because um, on the bottom suggests that he was photographed at British photographic studio called Byrne and Shepherd in Calcutta. He's wearing civilian clothes, a velvet lounge jacket with chongraven, stockings, and shoes. We have not yet as been able to determine if he brought this suit with him from Bangkok or just made it in India. But we do know that His Majesty and his entourage did a fair amount of shopping, much of it for the gifts for the families in Bangkok. Uh, Major Sladen wrote about this. On Monday 29th, the large canopy in front of the king's audience, Chen at Delhi, was literally converted into a chow bazaar with native merchants who came in crowds at windows of daily work of everyday description. The Siamese, though eager purchasers of everything novel, were true as regarded fixed prices and always asked for and received and discount for cash payments. But when bargains had once been concluded, they paid promptly and without stint. It is hardly an exaggeration to say that the party must have added at least a ton's weight of Charles to their baggage in Charles alone, taken on with him from daily. These were carried away not a trade, speculation, but as a present for distribution among female relatives on their return to Bangkok. During his stay in Bombay, King Jolongon went to shopping at Mr. Treacher's general store. Treasures carry a wide variety of items made in Europe, which Major Sladen describes as having been very interesting and desirable to the king and his party. We know, however, that the king also bought some clothing for himself in India because we have a Suvami uniform jacket in the royal collection. This is very similar to the one the king is wearing now. This photograph of the king taken circa 1871. So here is the surviving jacket that we found in the inner court. Um, you can see the label is from Hamad and Company in Calcutta. A military and civil tailor in Calcutta, and if you look closely at the below the stripes, the cuff treatment like this, we only found in this kind of uniform and his period of photograph. So an important result of the visit to India is the arrival of the man's officer called Ramsey and Company in Bangkok. His Majesty invited Richard Harris Ramsey on the left to come to Bangkok to set up store, the shop called Ramsey Wakefield Company, opened in Bangkok later in 1872 and became an important source of Western clothing for the court. Ramsey and Wakefield maintained close ties with the main branch in Calcutta for only a few years. Then, they reorganized under a local partner, and the firm's name changed to Ramsey, Laurie, and Company. And in 1872, 1874, Harry A. Batman, who also came from Calcutta, joined the company, and in 1878, became a managing partner. The, again, the firm's name changed first to Ramsey, Batman and Company, and after Mr. Batman left the company in 1884, the store just Ramsey and Company. We have conflicting information about when Ramsey closed, but obituary of his sons lists it as 1883. But we have an advertisement from Sam Weekly Advertiser um, on the left is 18, from 1880, but on the right is from 1889. So the store might close after this. As you see, the ad indicates that Ramsey has a ladies' showroom providing ribbons, laces, bird swings, and artificial flowers for dress decoration. It was also an army contractor. 
gold embroiderer and hat manufacturer. King Shilongong Sirga, 1881, in the full uniform of the King's Guards, he, is, he was the commander-in-chief. And here is a surviving uniform from the royal collection a blue wool broadcloth with black velvet collar and cuffs and gold braid trim. It has Ramsey and Company label, which suggests if our data source are correct, this is was made after 1884 because now they only Ramsey and Company. So apart from the trip from to Malaya in 1888, the king remained in Thailand for more than two decades. The half Thai half western model of clothing for the court established after his 1871 trip, remained the standard at court until his travels in the 1890s. Well, the king had long wanted to go to Europe. In fact, he had wanted to go in 1871 and 1872, but the region felt it was too far and too dangerous a trip. But in 1897, he finally got there. And as a rehearsal, however, for the big trip, um, he, uh, Queen Sawapa, and a very large party of courtiers went to Singapore and Java in 1896. You see pictures on the screen of that trip. At the king's insistence, the entire royal party wore full Western, full Western dress. His majesty believed that a proper westernized appearance was essential to his success abroad. The clothes made in Bangkok for the trip probably came from Harry Badman and company, and I'll say more about them in a moment. While they were in Singapore, both the king and the queen went shopping at John Little and company, which uh, Alisa just mentioned. Little's opened for them especially on a Sunday, so they had a little private shopping spree at the store. Uh, they also went shopping at Katz Brothers, and Katz's and Little's were both essentially department stores. They offered a wide range of dry goods and comestibles as, uh, as well, uh, imported from Europe, as well as local tailoring and dressmaking services. And although His Majesty appears to have shopped at John Little virtually every time he went to Singapore, we actually have only one object in the collection, which I don't have a slide of to show you, I'm afraid. Um, but it's a hat imported from Christie's in London with a Little and Company label, and he probably purchased it either in 1896 or on his subsequent trip in 1901. On April 7, 1897, His Majesty finally embarked for Europe. He returned eight months later having visited 14 countries. Much of his wardrobe for the trip probably came from Badman, whom we believe was the primary European outfitter in Bangkok at that time. Harry Badman, formerly, as Alisa said, the managing partner of Ramsey Badman and Company, uh, came to a parting of the ways with Ramsey and opened on his own in 1884. The company billed itself as naval, military, and civil tailors, court dressmakers, furnishers, and general stores, and supplied the royal family with everything from court uniform to China to cigarettes. Many surviving men's garments in the royal collection, both Western and Thai style, bear Badman labels, and both Queen Sawapa and Queen Sukuman are known to have patronized dressmakers there. In addition to manufacturing garments in Bangkok, the firm also imported ready-made goods from Europe and the United States through the London Buying House, which was founded by Mr. Badman himself when he sold his company and returned to Britain in 1892. And this is corroborated by a hat in the Royal Collection, which bears the labels of both a prominent London hatter, Henry Heath, and Harry A. Badman. Although we have not as yet been able to firmly connect any of the surviving Badman garments in the collection with His Majesty's European trip, we do know that Badman did make some of the clothes that the king took to Europe because in several of the letters he wrote to the queen, he complained bitterly about how badly they fitted um, and how poor the quality was. His pants had holes in them and he was not happy. And that was not the end of the king's problems with his clothes. Uh, as he got closer to Italy, which was his first destination, you can see in his letters that he's taking stock of his wardrobe. And on May 9th, 1897, he wrote to the queen that a naval uniform that he had ordered from Badman to be sent to him at Port Said never showed up. 
Uh, on the 17th, he discovered that the military boots he had ordered for the trip didn't fit. He could get his foot into them, but he couldn't get his calf into them. Fortunately, he had ankle boots and those fitted just fine. Arriving in Venice on May 14th, he lamented that the overcoat that he had had made and brought with him wasn't warm enough. Uh, the temperature was, uh, sorry, I have to give this to you in Fahrenheit. Um, the temperature was just below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and he was cold because, as you all know, Bangkok is much, much warmer than that. Um, he does not specify the tailor of said overcoat, but there's a reasonable probability that it was Badman. The wardrobe that the king had made for his 1896 trip to Singapore and Java presumably would also have been available for use, although the amount of wardrobe overlap as yet is undetermined. Uh, on his, in his May 9th letter to Queen Sawapa, um, he does say that three pairs of formal uniform trousers that he had purchased in Batavia the previous year and had brought with him were still usable, but he didn't have any trousers suitable for half uniform should he need to wear that. Uh, there is also, in the royal collection, a lovely silk top hat with the label of Protel, a department store in Surabaya, which His Majesty could have purchased during his first visit there in July 1896, and if so, he may well have taken that with him to Europe. Uh, as you will have seen in Pat's slides and also in uh, some of mine, His Majesty often wore uniform during his European trip, uh, and his letters home document uh, a range of minor variations from full dress uniform, which included decorations that you see here, uh, insignia and a sash, to dress uniform, which meant without the sash, and what the king called normal uniform, which was minus the sash, the decorations, and the insignia, and in which he seems to have been most comfortable. Le Petit Belge, on September 10, 1897, described it this way, quote, The King of Siam wears, as well as the princes, uniforms resembling English uniforms, white coat, colonial helmet with white feather, dark trousers, unquote. Um, the King had begun wearing um, a white uniform coat with dark velvet collar and cuffs as early as 1891 and possibly earlier. Um, you see him here in the 1891 photograph with the Tsarevich, Nicholas II, to his right, your left, um, before he became Tsar. There is a surviving example, just one, in the royal collection with a Ramsey and Company label, which is likely to date to around this period, and which includes a pair of trousers that appear to be unworn because what you see um, here, this is actually the brown paper that's uh, the protective covering that the tailor has put over the gold braid stripe on the out seam. Um, so you don't actually see what that stripe looks like in the photograph. Um, full dress uniform was what he usually put on whenever he arrived in a new city. It's what he wore when he made his official entry into a city. And he also wore it for banquets and other official events as well. But he seems to have opted for simpler uniform whenever it was possible. There are a couple of uniform jackets from the era of the European trip in the royal collection, but so far we have seen none that are white. There is, however, a beautiful red Kingsguard jacket from Trunz and Voss, a Berlin military tailor. Sorry, this is his entry into Denmark in July 1897, so there he is in full dress uniform. And here is the Trunz and Voss uniform jacket. We don't know when this was purchased or uh, who it was by, by whom it was commissioned. If the king commissioned it, it was most likely done during his visit to Berlin from August 26th to 29th, 1897, though it could also have been ordered during the 1907 trip to Europe when he spent quite a lot of time in Germany. Um, or it could even have been ordered by one of his several sons who was educated in Germany. So much remains to be done on this jacket as well. There are several well-known photographs of His Majesty that show him wearing the kind of proper European gentleman's attire that he wore in Singapore and Java, which consisted of a frock coat or a morning coat, trousers, sometimes an overcoat, and a top hat or bowler usually. Badman is a likely source for any that he took with him to Europe, but we do know of some clothing purchases that he made for himself abroad. On June 22nd, he wrote to the Queen of trying on a suit that he had had tailored in Geneva about a month earlier, but he doesn't name uh, either the maker or the merchant. Very frustrating. Some of his clothing purchases may have been due to the kinds of fit problems that he describes in his letters from April, 
um, perhaps the result of weight fluctuations. Uh, others may have been triggered by the need to replace clothing that was looking worn. He was essentially on stage virtually all the time and needed to look um, as would befit a king, but it was a very long trip and his uniforms and his formal clothes got an awful lot of use. So he might have needed to replace some things that were looking a little more worn than he felt was appropriate. London, which of course was the epicenter of fine men's bespoke tailoring, was also a completely logical place for him to have bought those kinds of clothes. The British trade magazine Taylor and Cutter corroborated this, sort of, saying, quote, it can be seen at a glance that his clothes were made by an English tailor. The king, judged by his dress, looks like a typical English gentleman. Perhaps the silk facing on the lapel of his neatly fitting coat is a little too heavy for the real West End article, and in one or two small matters of details, criticism might be justifiable. But taking the dress as a whole, it does credit both to his majesty's good taste and to the tailor who produced the garment." Unquote. This backhanded compliment was actually reprinted in the Bangkok Times on September 11th. And Taylor and Cutter notwithstanding, His Majesty did in fact have a real West End tailor, John Sampson of 56 Brook Street, Grosvenor Square, who was listed in the London City Directory as a special juvenile tailor, hosier and outfitter, habit maker and gentleman's tailor. His Majesty not only patronized Sampson's shop in London, he persuaded Sampson to open a branch in Bangkok. Sampson's son Fred established the Thai branch and the letter he wrote to His Majesty announcing the opening of the business in 1899 survives. In it, he assures the king that he has brought an experienced English cutter for the tailoring end of the business, plus a French dressmaker for Her Majesty the Queen. Further, he has already made the dress and undress uniforms the king commissioned and he begs for the honor of being allowed to fit them on the king personally before they're delivered. Samson's would actually have given Badman's a serious run for its money in several regards. They competed directly as court tailors, outfitters, and importers. They were also shoe and boot makers, which Badman was not. And Samson's letters suggest that they would fit garments prior to delivery, whereas the memoirs of two different female members of the court suggested that Badman didn't do that. Uh, one would be measured, and then the finished clothes would simply be delivered, no fitting available. Once Samson uh, established themselves, they enjoyed considerable royal patronage. We've discovered shirts and underwear with Samson's labels surviving in the royal collections, although some of them are associated with King Rama VI. Samson was also one likely source for a whole host of surviving garments and accessories from a raft of British outfitters, including shirts from Poole and Lord. Other garments seem more suited to Europe's climate than Thailand's and may have been purchased at Badman for the 1897 trip, Badman or Samson for the 1907 trip, or from the Bangkok Outfitting Company, which was owned by B. Grimm and Company, who were Bangkok's foremost pharmacists. The business was in operation by 1901 and likely earlier, and was consolidated with another of Grimm's retailing operations in 1914. The Bangkok Outfitting Company had importing relationships with its very own stable of European manufacturers and also made clothes locally and it's well represented in the royal collection. But the other likelihood is that some of these clothes were purchased either directly from their makers or distributors in Europe or were purchased by the king abroad. There are a lot of British labels in the collection including gloves from Founds Brothers and Dents, knitted underwear from Harborers of New Bond Street and John Smedley of Lee Mills, Matlock and Derbyshire, which is one of only a handful of firms that His Majesty patronized that's still in business. Continental labels include stockings and socks from an as yet unidentified manufacturer in Germany. We can see the German on the box. Um, and also from Aubin Marché. There was actually a branch of Aubin Marché in Singapore in 1897, but because these are priced in French franc, we have concluded that they were purchased in Paris. His Majesty oftentimes writes to the Queen about gifts that he's bought for her and for other members of the royal family and sent home ahead of his return, and these latter may actually be an example. And finally, there are hats from many suppliers such as Henry Heath, Lincoln Bennett, and Robert Heath in the West End of London, and shoes and boots from Samuel Winter in South Kensington near the Thai Embassy. Not only does His Majesty's name appear on the sweatband of this top hat from Lincoln Bennett, which you see at the bottom of the right-hand slide, um, he wrote to Queen Sawapa on August 6, 1897 about buying it. Um, and he was then photographed three days later um, wearing a top hat that could well be this one. We don't have proof, but there's a reasonably good chance he'd bought it and he wanted to show it off. Equally happily, 
we have a detailed bill from Samuel Winter dating to 1899, recording purchases made on three separate dates in 1897. Rama V was actually in England personally uh, on the first two dates, and on the third, he had probably just sailed for home. The order includes a wide range of shoes and boots, including patent leather and kid military boots, calfskin and buckskin laced shoes and pumps, and a pair of patent leather dress wellingtons with polished ebony boot trees and engraved nickel silver mounts. Although much detail work remains to be done, Elisa and I think we can conclude that the king and the court obtained the majority of their Western dress from Western suppliers here in Bangkok, who either made it here or imported it from Europe. In addition, accessories such as hats, shoes, and stockings and shawls were easily purchased by the king when he was abroad, both for his immediate use and, and as gifts for loved ones at home. As Prince Damrong later wrote, his majesty's travels abroad were an important source of information about dress and culture in Europe, which eventually led not only to the development of Thailand as a modern state, but also informed significant changes to the traditions of both Thai court dress and civilian dress. Thank you.